I've never seen people in the US excited about big zucchini. So most farmers pick them small. But if you want to stuff them, the big zucchini rule. Today we're making an Eastern European classic squash stuffed with a meat rice mixture and then braised in a tomato sour cream sauce. The ideal squash for this dish would be the light-skinned variety named Kusa. You've seen me use it on my channel before. It has a slightly firmer texture that works particularly well in this dish, but the only huge summer squash I could get was the dark green one. So that's what we are using today. Bring a medium pot of water to a boil. Add a generous pinch of salt and stir to dissolve. Add half a cup of jasmine or basmati rice and stir occasionally for about a minute to make sure the rice doesn't clump up. Then reduce heat to maintain a lively simmer and cook uncovered for 10 minutes. Drain in a fine mesh strainer and rinse in cold water. Now let's put the meat mixture together. You can use any ground meat as long as it has roughly 20% fat content. My ideal choice would be the meatloaf mix of equal parts beef, pork, and veal. But I couldn't get any today, so I'm using ground beef. To make it a bit more succulent, I'll help it out with gelatin. It's completely optional, and if you are using the meatloaf mix, not necessary. But for pure beef, it does help. Put a quarter cup of cold water into a bowl. By the way, choose a wider one than this cup. You'll see in a minute why. Sprinkle it with 10 grams of powdered gelatin and let it sit for five minutes to hydrate. Since my gelatin wasn't spread out enough, it didn't get completely hydrated and letting it sit longer didn't help, but that's okay. We'll fix it in a minute. Microwave it in 15 second bursts until all the gelatin is melted. Since mine wasn't hydrated completely, I ended up with a little lump, but we'll just remove it and carry on. Put one good size yellow onion, one celery stick, a big handful of parsley, and two garlic cloves into the food processor. I chopped all the stuff very coarsely since the food processor will do all the heavy lifting here. Add three tablespoons of very cold unsalted butter, 30 grams of panko breadcrumbs, and 140 grams of yogurt, buttermilk or kefir. Pulse everything until very fine, but not smooth, scraping down the sides of the bowl as needed. Here's the texture we're going for. Move everything into a large bowl. Add 14 grams of salt and whatever amount of black pepper suits your taste. This filler is what makes my filling soft and succulent. Add two pounds of ground meat and the gelatin mix if using. Mix very thoroughly with your hand. This can also be done a lot easier in a mixer with a pedal attachment. If you have one, use it. You have to dirty a big bowl anyway, so why not? Mix in the cooked rice until the mixture is homogeneous. Rinse and trim some leeks. You should have about one pound after trimming, but the exact amount is not very important. Cut the leeks in half and check for sand. Most of the time you'll find something, but hopefully not too much. If you're lucky, the amount of sand is small enough that you can flip them like pages of a book under running water to get rid of it. If the amount of sand is serious, chop them first, then put them into a bowl of cold water and rub with your hands to loosen the sand. Wait a minute for the sand to settle and scoop them out with a slotted spoon. If the leeks are a real pain to deal with, you can replace them with diced yellow onions. Set a large pan or a pot over medium heat, add a quarter cup of olive oil and the leeks, season generously with salt. Stir to combine and let them cook, stirring occasionally until the leeks are tender and golden brown. This will take about 15 to 20 minutes, but really depends on your pot, the heat setting, and how wet your leeks were in the beginning of cooking. 
add a couple of sliced garlic cloves and another pinch of salt. Cook, stirring occasionally for a minute or until the garlic is aromatic. Add a large can of whole or diced tomatoes. If they're whole, break them up with a spoon. Add one cup of dry white wine or water, an additional two cups of water, a teaspoon of sugar, and bring to a simmer. In a medium bowl, combine two cups of sour cream and three tablespoons of all-purpose flour and whisk thoroughly until absolutely no lumps remain. Stir in a ladle full of the tomato sauce into the sour cream and whisk immediately. This will warm up the sour cream gradually to ensure it won't curdle when we add it to the sauce. Stir in another one and whisk. Pour the sour cream into the tomato sauce and bring to a simmer while whisking. Taste and correct for salt. Keep tasting and adjusting until you get it right. You've added enough salt when it tastes lip-smacking good. If you like black pepper, add some to taste. Peel and trim the zucchini. Cut them into one and a quarter inch thick chunks. There are many ways to core them. If the zucchini are really huge, you can use a tiny cookie cutter. This method only worked on my largest zucchini. A more flexible method is to use a melon ball scooper to remove the seeds. And if all else fails, you can use a paring knife, but that's harder and slower. Don't throw away these scraps. You can brown them in olive oil, add a little garlic, and mash with a potato masher for a fabulous spread of pasta sauce. Sometimes I should make a video about it. Once all the zucchini are hollowed, Preheat the oven to 350 Fahrenheit with the rack in the middle. Get a plate with flour handy and set a large skillet of a medium-high heat with enough canola or some other neutral oil to cover the bottom. While the pan is heating up, season just enough zucchini that can fit into the pan all over with salt. Dunk each flat side of zucchini into flour and shake off the excess. Place the zucchini in the pan and regulate the heat so that they are browning steadily but not burning. The reason we don't want to season the rest of them before we are ready to cook is that salt will draw the moisture out and will make them very wet and difficult to brown. Flour helps with absorbing this moisture, but we don't want to exacerbate the problem. When the first side is brown, flip them over and brown the second side. When they're getting close, start salting and flouring the second batch. Get the first batch out to some baking dish that is about 2 inches deep and brown the second batch. During the whole browning process, make sure the bottom of the pan is well lubricated and add more oil whenever necessary. When all the zucchini are brown, cool them for about 5 minutes. Then stuff with the meat mixture, packing it very tightly into the zucchini. Pile the remaining meat mixture on top of the zucchini. Pour the sauce on top. I know it will look like a lot of sauce, but during the baking time it will reduce some. Place both pans in the oven for an hour or until the sauce is bubbly and the meat registers 180 Fahrenheit. If you want a little color on top, turn up the oven to 450 Fahrenheit and turn on the convection fan for an additional 5 to 10 minutes. Cool them for 20 minutes, sprinkle with parsley, dill or whatever herb you want and serve. You want to hear something sad? I forgot to hit record when I cut the first one open and I only realized it while editing. <laughs> so I don't have a beautiful shot of the inside for you, but they were really tasty. Now a few practical considerations about cookware, the batch size and reheating. As you might have noticed, this dish is a lot of work, but making a large batch is not much more effort than making a small batch. A large batch will take a bit more time, but the amount of cleanup will be the same whether you are making one portion or eight portions. Which is why my recipe is written for eight portions. You don't need eight people to eat it in one sitting. This dish reheats 
beautifully. The reheating instructions are in the recipe below the video. And keep in mind that this dish is a full meal. It has a vegetable, a grain and a meat. All you need to serve with it is some bread to mop up the sauce. I'm sure I'll get questions about freezing. I've never tried it, but my instinct tells me the zucchini will turn into a wet puddle. In the video, you saw me use one large pan for the sauce another large pan for browning and baking of the zucchini and a 13 by 9 inch pyrex dish to bake the second batch. This pan arrangement makes it possible to multitask a little. While the leeks are cooking, I can peel and core the zucchini. The downside is that I needed two separate pans. If you have a large deep roasting pan, like a turkey pan, there is another option. Brown the first batch of zucchini and add to the roasting pan. Brown the second batch and add to the roasting pan. Then use the same pan to cook the leeks and the sauce. While the leeks are cooking, you can stuff the zucchini with meat, pour the sauce on top and bake them in one large roasting pan. It does result in washing fewer dishes, but the dishes are bigger. All I'm trying to say is that there is more than one way to skin that cat. Think through the cooking procedure and the cookware you have available and make a plan before starting to cook. Here are more very detailed culinary tutorials for you to check out. And if you are ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.